bless the Lord. So the thoughts for today are based on prayer, uh, the residual benefits of prayer. I wanted to really encourage our hearts. Um, I know for most of us who are here, I think you get this because you're here and you come to pray. Um, but I want to encourage you and stir up your pure minds. And for those who will see this to, to help to have a change of mind and a growth of in our understanding of why we need to pray and why it's important. So we're going to look at the residual benefits of prayer. Luke 10, and it, it may not all seem um, aligned this morning, but stay with me. Luke 10, 33 and 34. It's just uh, the, the story of or the parable of the Good Samaritan. And I'm just focusing on the part of the journey or the story where the, the Good Samaritan turns up. From verse 33, it says, but a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast. And he brought him to an inn and took care of him. We know the story, hopefully, um, of the man that was beaten and left for dead and the religious folks passed him by. Um, but this Samaritan stopped and had compassion on him and helped him. Hebrews 5, verse 14, taking this from the complete Jewish Bible, it says, but solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties have been trained by continuous exercise to distinguish good from evil. The King James speaks about our senses being exercised to discern good from evil. Um, we'll come back to, to this and why it's in here in a moment. Psalm 84, verse 2, my soul longeth, Yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord, my heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Now, there may not be an immediate link that's obvious to prayer, but I want to show you how prayer really impacts uh, compassion and how prayer uh, impacts your discernment and how prayer convinces your flesh of the things of God. Um, and we'll, 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 go, we'll go into that right now. Uh, I've put here in my notes, and this again, it's just my prayer thoughts the Lord gave me from this morning. It's important to establish more truths about prayer in your mind's eye, because beliefs which register in the deepest part of your mind alter behavior. Okay, the things that you actually believe change the way you behave. It's very profound thought and very true thought. When you believe something at the deepest part of your mind and spirit, it changes the way you behave. Uh, many of us would have been through various um, trials from time to time. And, and you can probably bear witness with the moment the trial turned around or the moment the, moment the situation turned around for you. It, it wasn't always when the problem got resolved. A lot of the times it's the point at which God changes your perspective. He changes the way you feel about it. You come out of a place of prayer sometimes and all of a sudden, like, the weight is lifted. Um, the situation hasn't changed, but I've changed because of a truth I've accepted at the deepest level of my spirit. Sometimes it's about recognizing, hey, this is a situation that I can't change. And I need to stop focusing on the aspect of the things that I can't change and focus on what I can change. And what I can change most of the time is me. I can change my reactions to things. I can change the way I perceive it, even when things don't change. And so when we begin to really believe about prayer, what prayer really is, because I'm telling you, the way the enemy makes a lot of us feel about prayer is that it's hard. Um, it's, it's sometimes boring. It's sometimes unfulfilling, difficult to do. Um, sometimes we're falling asleep every time we want to pray. We have different things about prayer. And for a lot of folks, prayer is something that, you know, I know I should really do it. Almost as if it's like, um, you know, people saying, I know I should go to the gym, but I, I just don't have the time. I know I'd be healthier. Like, I'm not going to die if I don't do it. Um, but actually, I don't, I, you know, I don't have the time. I want to do it, but I, I don't always have the, the get up and go. Things change in people when they get a diagnosis. So when a person gets a diagnosis and they have a brush with mortality and they realize they maybe only have a, you know, if they don't change their, 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 their habits, they're going to die within five years or something. And all of a sudden they get, they have to get up and go to get to the gym. Things have changed for me in prayer 
And my thoughts about prayer are always change during prayer. When the Lord shows me something, and sometimes through a word, when I see how God feels about something, it shifts me and it changes the way I believe uh, what I, it changes what I believe about prayer. It makes me want to get up to pray. I, I, I see prayer now as, as more of, of a necessity like taking a shower. I don't see it like going to the gym. I see it like this is a must for me to smell right. This is a must for me to have um, good mental health. Like this isn't a joke. This isn't an optional. I need to maybe change the way I eat. No, prayer is an absolute essential for me. And I see it now. I didn't always see it. Your mind has to be changed by the presence of God, in the presence of God, by the word of God. And when God, when God makes you feel like a scintilla of how he feels about souls, about the world, just a little bit of God's heart will get you out your bed every day. Yeah, the song the Lord gave me, I don't think I've ever sung it to you. One day you'll hear it maybe, that there's so much on God's heart that makes me to rise out of my slumber and into the fight. It's his heart that gets me up. It's the way he feels about it. And when he allows me to just feel a little bit of his feeling, that thing gets me up. I don't think that prayer now is just something, it's a nice, it's a nice to have, no way. Okay, so it's important that your mind understands this. And this is just the first point I'm making. It's important that your mind understands that this is, this, this is so vital and then that it carries all these residual benefits. And I wanna go into some of those for you now. Prayer will increase your capacity for storing oil and wine. And I'm looking at this good Samaritan and I'm thinking this man was walking, but he wasn't walking empty. He wasn't walking um, with an inability to help and serve others. And let me tell you this, the enemy, and I've said it before, but I'll say it again. He'd love to keep us at a place where we can't minister to others. He'd love to keep us at a place where all we're doing is wearing our church's logo on our shirt. Yeah, that, and that's, that's the extent of the Christian you are, that you belong to a church. He don't mind that because that Levite, that was him. He was able to just pass by. You know why? Because he, he wasn't carrying anything. And sometimes we, we pass by situations and the truth is we don't have the capacity to help other people because we just are not carrying anything. What I've got right now is just enough to keep me going. I, I can't stop. This this Samaritan had enough to put this man on his own beast, put him in a hotel, pay that price, poured oil, oil and wine in his wounds. He was able to treat the man and he was able to actually make some provision for him for when he wasn't even going to be there. You know, the kind of church that we have to have today can't be the kind of church that can only give a word from across the road. And, and, and even pouring in the oil and wine is great if, if you're going to try and do that one time hit ministry. But the church needs to be thinking about how we take care of people beyond the injury, how we take care of them beyond the initial counsel, how we take care of them beyond the you need to be baptized and they get in the pool. OK, so what else are you doing to take care of that person on their onward journey? The church has to be able to deal with all these. We need to be carrying something. Prayer will make you carry. Amen. You see situations and think. You know, you know, in the street and have to stop. Why? Because I'm carrying something. I have to address this. I've got what it takes to be able to bring calm to a situation that's aroused. I can't just walk by. And the reason I can't walk by is because I've spent time in God's presence getting oil and wine. I've been getting the, 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 the resources I need to be able to be a good minister. By the time I've walked out of prayer, I mean, I'm, I'm dealt with. I mean, I come into this prayer to serve you. I've, I've been served before I come here. I can't serve you if I'm coming here for service. So I have to get up before to be here to serve you. That's just ministry. I have to be served so I can serve others. Prayer will increase your capacity for the people who need ministry. So you don't, you don't, you don't become one of these Christians who's always talking about, you know, don't be hanging around people that can't elevate you, <laughs> you know. If you can only be around people who can, who can lift you up and give you something, then that means you're in no position to minister. The minister has to always be among people who need and people who can't always feed you necessarily, people can't, who can't always give back to you. Jesus said, if you, wanna, if you wanna give to somebody, give to someone who can't pay you back. Prayer increases your compassion for people who need it. 
it, it increases your ability to sacrifice yourself to serve others. You can't get up and pray every day, Lord, save this one, help this one, help, and don't consider that you might be part of the solution. The more you praise, the more you feel like I'm indebted. I can't just be here asking God to do things. I need to be part of this solution. That's why prayer is good. It increases our capacity to serve because we become more aligned in our thinking to what matters to God. And the more we stay out of prayer is the more we can only think about what matters to us and what my concerns are. So, you know, we talked last week about taking on the Lord's burden and the Lord's yoke. We have to release our own yokes and burdens, we said, before we can actually begin to take on what is really affecting God's heart. God, God can't put some, he can't put his heart on you if you are still wrapped up in yourself. And his burden will weigh you, it will kill you. If you haven't cast your cares on him, how are you going to begin to work with him to serve other people? And so I've also put here identifying, it will increase your capacity to identify and respond to the concerns of the Lord. So I've been saying this. You will have now the capacity to do things, to see things. You won't miss opportunities. Yeah? You won't walk past opportunities to minister because you are increased. So that, the, the, you know, yes, we're coming to pray for other people. And we want to see the Lord do things. But listen, the Lord's wisdom of why we come to pray is not just that he needs us to do stuff. Us coming to, to the Lord to pray is constantly transforming us into his image making us think more like him, making us feel more like him, giving us reflexes that more represent the reflex of a child of God than, than just somebody who is saying they're a Christian. Prayer is maturing us. I put here, it's making us more patient, okay? Because as we begin to pray through our own issues and see, you know, we, we begin to reflect on him and see how patient God has been with us through the years. <laughs> you know, how many times could we sing this song he was there all the time, waiting patiently in line. It, it's not just about the first time we came to the Lord. He was waiting for us to get more serious about prayer. He was waiting for us to get more serious about evangelism. He was waiting for us to get more serious about our family, our commitments to our children, our commitment. Like he's been waiting on a whole load of things. And so when we get closer to him and he starts just kind of making us more and more like him, we appreciate the patience he had with us and understanding the patience he's had with us allows us to be more patient with others. Then you can see somebody and you can see um, what they're manifesting, their behaviors, their attitudes. And you say, you know what? That was me five years ago. That was me last year. That was me two weeks ago, you know? And so instead of just thinking, um, you know, being harsh about people's journey, like they should have been further. Sometimes we forget what we were like in year one and two of our salvation, year three and four, in the first few years of our marriage, we, we forget the men and women that we were when talking to people as if we've always been as you know had it together like this and so when we pray we begin to see the patience of God towards us it allows us to be more patient to others as you start to pray for people with the help of the spirit you know not in yourself because when we're sometimes praying in ourselves and we want God to do things we can pray out of a place of bitterness we can pray out pray out of a place of um, disappointment in people but when we pray by the spirit we begin to see the God who looks beyond faults and sees needs. Right? We see faults. God says the reason why this fault is happening is because of this need over here. So he, he leapfrogs the fault to get to the need to fix that fault. And when, the more we pray is the more we realize and have sympathy for people because we realize that every negative manifestation is, is, um, is, is being driven by a need of that person. And Christ is the answer to that need. Prayer sharpens our ability to discern. So we, we looked at Hebrews 5 here and we, we, we says that mature, uh, solid food is for the mature, for those who, whose faculties have been trained by continuous exercise to distinguish good from evil. Prayer is part of the continuous exercise of the believer. It's, the, it's part of the continuous exercise your spirit needs to be sharp in discernment. So, so you, you think, yes, I'm coming to pray for this and this and that, what God's doing with you in the meantime is giving you help to discern things, good from evil. Um, even the flow of prayer, you begin to discern when God's given a word of prophecy, you begin to discern when that's a word for you, you begin to discern when there's a word for the people. Your senses are being trained. The more we pray, you don't see it, but the more time you spend in the spirit is the more of a specialist you can become in the spirit. You can't become a specialist in something that you don't spend time doing. 
And so being in the spirit is important because we're not always in the spirit. We have the spirit, but we're not always in the spirit. So praying in the spirit, singing in the spirit, worshiping in the spirit is important for me because the more time I spend on a spiritual plane is, a, is, a, is the more uh, mature I can become in spiritual things. You don't become mature in spiritual things by reading about it. You need to be in the spirit to grow in the spirit, making us a help and not a hindrance. That's what prayer is doing. It's making us part of the solution and not part of the problem. Prayer affords us more self-awareness again. And when we're, when we're becoming more self-aware, that's allowing us to fix ourselves, okay? I, I believe in preaching of by the spirit that helps to address what's going on in you. So a preacher in the spirit, because the word is a discerner of thoughts and intentions, will come and begin to minister to you. I don't believe in exposure where there's repentance. And understand what I'm saying. I believe when you have a level of self-awareness that you don't have to be called out. You don't need prophets pulling you out and telling you about your life because you're not trying to hide it. When you're self-aware, you're fixing your business with God. And so prayer is that mirror. That's why we have this pattern of prayer when we come in. If we mean what we say, if we're really confessing our sins and saying, Lord, here's what I've noticed, forgive me. Lord, uh, what I don't know is help me to see and fix me wash me, cleanse me. You do that every day. You're, you're keeping yourself in a place where you're rapture ready. All right. But also you're being open for God to show you things about yourself that maybe you didn't see before. It's a sense of maturity. You mature. Mature believers self-regulate. Mature believers take it to the Lord in prayer. Mature believers repent quickly. We don't let, we don't let arguments and disagreements fester for long periods of time. We do our best to not let the sun go down in our arm. Prayer helps you do that. Why? Because the next time you go to pray and you don't feel the utterance and you don't feel the entrance into God's presence, he begins to point you to the problem. I'm not letting you in. You can talk as much as you want, but you're not going to feel my help to pray until you deal with the things that you have with other people. Leave here thy gift and go make it right with people. Prayer makes you self-aware. And finally, prayer is a posture that allows God to get the best out of me and allows me to get the best out of God. These are the residual benefits of prayer. I'm constantly in a position where God has my life surrendered. And if I'm surrendered, that means he can get the best out of me. He can ask me to stop by and help a Samaritan. Now, I'm not stopping at the roadside and I'm empty. I'm not just gonna stop and say to the Samaritan, hey, be healed, my friend, be healed. And I'm gonna start pouring in out of what God's poured into me, into his life to help him on his way. Prayer is a posture that allows God to get the best out of you, but it allows you also to get the best out of God. You're in a position where you can receive all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I pray this will really be a help to you um, and a help to reshape our mind that, you know, all the things we come to do when we pray, you know, it's right, it's spot on. We're here to, to intercede and to help others and to see things change in our communities and in our world. But wow, the benefits, the residual benefits of just being in prayer are so thorough and deep that, you know, we, we need prayer more than prayer needs us. All right. God bless you. We're going to move on with our prayer this